Hello world and happy new year to all you retro computing fans out there. Uh, it's been a very long time since I made a video update on my Z80 homebrew computer project. Um, the project has not been abandoned, it, it has slowed down, but for the most part I've just been a lot lazier about making videos than I have about uh, working on it. So I'm hoping to uh, catch everybody up with a sort of burst of videos in the in the near future um, and today I'm going to be talking about a um, uh, sound card I suppose that I've made for the LM512 so in an in an earlier video I demoed some uh, very primitive ping type sounds from a um, an old sound chip which was actually on the LM512 board um, I removed that sound chip later on to, to make room for the um, you know, buffers and things associated with the expansion port and now I've actually, uh, you know, done it properly with a, um, you know, an expansion port device. So uh, we have a, a ribbon cable uh, here coming from the the LM512 itself, um, carrying out the you know data bus and address lines and that sort of thing. Um, the board itself uh, is constructed more or less the same as the LM512 with the laser cut acrylic and uh, standoff sort of construction. So I'll take this uh, top plate off so we can get a better look. Uh, what we have are sort of two sound chips here. They are um, the AY three eighty nine twelve by General Instruments. Um, so these were part of a, a series of chips, which also included the um, AY three eighty nine ten and eighty nine thirteen, and they were made uh, under license by Yamaha as the the YN twenty one forty nine for a while as well. And, um, and these are classic chips. They were used in, in a lot of machines. Um, most famously, the ZX Spectrum and the Atari ST. But um, they're quite simple. Each chip has uh, three uh, three square wave channels. There's a um, a noise generator and uh, an envelope generator. Um, and so I've got I've got two of these on the board here. Um, there's this little uh, dip switch up here, which selects which of the uh, four. Um, channels on the LM512 expansion port uh, is used to address uh, this device. Um, there's a little 2 megahertz uh, quartz crystal here which is used to provide a clock for both the sound chips. Um, you know, there's a, um, uh, a thick not and or um, 74,000 series chips here just to do the, um, the decoding and stuff. Uh, these chips were designed to be easily interfaced to a um, uh, a 16-bit CPU general instruments made, which I forget the name of, but it was um, very similar to the PDP-11. But um, it has a weird kind of bus. Looks nothing at all like the the Z80 or the 652 or anything like that. And so you need a sort of more complicated than usual uh, decoding circuit to uh, you know strobe the right pins at the right time to write into the registers in these chips. But um, it's it's not too complicated. Um, so as I mentioned, each chip has three channels. Um, they output individually on three separate pins, and so you need a little circuit to mix them. Um, almost everyone who builds uh, some kind of homebrew device using these chips seems to come up with their own uh, unique uh, mixing circuit. So I've actually used the um, the same circuit that was used on the ZX Spectrum uh, for this card. You know, if it was good enough for the Spectrum, it's, it's good enough for me. And so there are... Um, for each chip here, uh, six six resistors um, and a transistor uh, each, and so these two channels um, are put out on a standard uh, quarter-inch mono uh, audio audio jack. There's a um, dual gang potentiometer here, which controls the volume, uh, and yeah, that's that's more or less it. Um, so the you know the Z80 on the LM512 uh, has to has to drive these chips to actually make music. Um, now I'm not. Uh, a chip tune musician by any stretch of the imagination, and so in order to demo this, um, what I've actually done is there is an old uh, file format not used very much uh, today in the modern demo scene, as far as I know. But it's simply called the YM file format, and it's just a um, basically a, a register dump um, of a song that's been composed in a, a proper um, tracker for one of these chips. Um, so you just put, there are uh, 14 um, registers in each chip controlling the sound, so each of the three channels has um, two bytes corresponding to the frequency, um, there are a couple of bytes to do with the, um, the noise channel and the sort of channel volumes mixing and then a couple to do with the envelope generator, but um, you know there's 14 in total and so you uh, 
dump the value of all 14 of those registers, uh, I think 50 or possibly 60 times a second, but, um, you know, quite frequently, and then, you know, you can store all that in this great big file and update the registers, um, periodically and sort of, you know, playback, playback music. Um, so the, uh, the Duart chip on the LM512, which has a 16-bit uh, timer built into it, is used to um, trigger an interrupt every uh, 50 seconds, um, which sort of updates the registers. Now, these files are actually fairly large. Um, at you know, at 50 hertz with 40 registers per dump, you're looking at about 40 kilobytes per minute of music. So a um, now, even a, a fairly short two-minute song is going to be more than 64 kilobytes, which, you know, fit neatly into the, the address space of the, the Z80. Um, and so, what I've actually done for this demo is I have the uh, entire YM for my music file stored on uh, on the CF card. Um, and what the LM512 does is kind of, uh, you know, read a sector of, of the music off the CF card, um, update the runners every few seconds, and when it's finished that sector it'll read a new one and sort of loop that way, and so you can read uh, the entire song even though it's, you know, a couple hundred kilobytes and it wouldn't wouldn't fit, uh, you know, in, in, in memory in one go. Um, so the, the song that I'm using for this, um, it's, it was quite hard for me to find uh, YM format files which uh, seem to work for me. I had to write a, a Python script to, um, you know, there, there's some interleaving in the file format so it compresses better. Uh, and in order to make it easy to play on the LM512, I wrote a little script to kind of undo that interleaving. It um, did not work for some reason on the vast majority of files I found, but I found one which worked quite nicely. Um, the song is called Seagulls. It's by uh, a quite a well-known um, chiptune artist for this chip, uh, who goes by the name of Tao, whose actual name is uh, Frank Seaman. He's from uh, Hamburg in Germany. Um, and so I'm going to play that, or at least the first couple minutes of that, in just a second. Before I do, I'm going to move my camera over to my uh, oscilloscope, which I've got on the uh, output from the chip, so you guys can watch the waveforms. Uh, what's over in that time? You guys can watch the waveforms in real time. There we go, as they play. Uh, okay, so uh, seagulls by Tao. So I'll just fade out there, um, I'm hoping to keep this video uh, under 10 minutes in total. So yeah, I'm very happy with, uh, with how that turned out. Hopefully I can find uh, some more chip tunes to convert and play on this. Um, and I'm also hoping to write uh, a basic tracker one day so I can actually use 
uh, both these chips at the same time and get six channels total. So uh, there's something to look forward to. Um, okay, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again soon with another video.